taker, had they taken up this stand, fighting from the beginning, this group would never have met with any success. I agree with this statement. And as devotees, we, do, we did our own little bit. But this, why not these steps are taken at the beginning, is not left to us. The reason is not known to us. And we cannot question anybody because there, there is no person who takes responsibility of this nature. This is the problem. I am a responsible man. You can talk to me. There is no platform to question. There is nobody who is held responsible for such a thing. Nobody. Who, who are you going to question? So we cannot question anybody who don't have that responsibility. Who are not answer, who are, who are answerable to us, who are accountable to us. There is no platform to express. That is the weakness amongst us and in the organization as well. How can devotees remove these leaders who are silently contributing to the success of oh, this I said, inaction of silence. Thank you. And now my friends, why all this? We pray for transformation in our lives. Let's all be transformed. Let's all, let's all be established in form faith, leaders as well as members. If the leaders mislead us, check them, correct them. See that they're just they're out of their position. When all of us raise with one voice, what you are doing is wrong. But we don't do that. So, because there is no focused attention, because there is no unity among the members, you, the leaders of the type you mentioned here are just carrying on, having their say on every issue. Moreover, being loyal to Swami, how can anyone, body, anybody be disloyal to him? by joining some other group. Being loyal to him, you are a leader. But how can you go to other group? Then you are disloyal. Loyalty and disloyalty cannot go together. Fire and water cannot go together. Therefore, when the question of loyalty, it is time to question. Yes, it is time to raise the point. At any place, you find it convenient and preferable. Thank you. Dedication only to Sai, there is a question on that. Has Satsai Baba instructed, instructed that officers of Satsai Baba Center should not serve as officers in other spiritual organizations? Yes, yes and yes. They should not be the officers in any other organization. If these leaders here are the officers in other organizations, they should be removed immediately immediately, without second thoughts, without hesitation. I know the charter of Sahaja organization. I was the state president of Sahaja organization for Andhra Pradesh. I participated in several of the meetings of World Council. And we had many, many of the interactive sessions with Swami on these issues, where he, Swami clearly said, office bearers here cannot be office bearers elsewhere. That's what we said clear. I think there will be no more doubts. Well, I know Center, well, the president of center is a regular follower of Madhu in USA. So, bring it to the notice of the higher people. Bring it to the notice of the responsible people. They will take care. And continue pursuing this until the, the result you obtain. The next question related to removal of his office bearers. Office officers are expected to lead by example and demonstrate discipline in the practice of Baba's teachings. 
they should discharge their organizational responsibilities and in his personal life. Yes? Well, removal of office bearers. Yes, on, yes. The question is, but in the case of repeated serious transgression, the officer may be removed from office by or on behalf of the National Council or Coordinating Committee. This is a recommendation. This is a suggestion. This is an advice. Now, they can be removed on grounds of proof, evidence brought to the notice of National Council or Coordinating Committee. They will immediately take action. If not, they are disobeying the command of Baba. It only means they are not responsible either to the members, nor to Swami for that matter. We are here as custodians of Swami. We should uphold this treasure, this wealth of the organization. We cannot make it so cheap, put it on the street. No. It is our responsibility to be trustworthy, act in full trust. So they should be removed either by National Council or Coordinating Committee if proved if proved that they are transgressing the discipline and the rules of the organization. Thank you. The question is this. If everything is already preordained, if everything is already written, if God is the puppeteer pulling the strings, why do we have to do sadhana? Very good. When everything is preordained, why should do? Why should I do sadhana? When God is the puppeteer, when I am going to dance according to the puppeteer, why should I do sadhana? Very good question. Very good question. Well, now the answer is this. Though we said orally that everything is preordained. Practically, we don't accept. Practically, we don't receive it. Practically, we are not willing to follow what we are saying. If everything is preordained, do you think everything with equal poise, with equal balance, with equanimity, do we take everything? No. Do you think it's all preordained? Therefore, uh, some close person died in your house. Can you take it like that? When you get profit, do you think it's preordained? No. When there is something positive happens, we take the credit. When anything negative happens, we throw the blame on God. So this is a kind of a, a convenience or a kind of business that we are not supposed to. If I really believe it's preordained, I should have that spirit of acceptance. Whatever that happens in life, I should accept gracefully, happily. Swami, it is your gift. Birth and death are preordained. Do we take them in that spirit? We don't. So, the feeling that everything is preordained, that everything is already written, is only verbal is only oral, but it is not in the practical life. Then, when he is the puppeteer pulling the strings, why do you have to do sadhana? Lovely question, lovely question. We have to do sadhana not to change our destiny, not to change our fate, not to bring a change in that which is already preordained. No, no, it is not in your hands. Why is sadhana? Sadhana is to develop the spirit of acceptance. Accept, oh my Lord, this is good for me. Oh my God, this is your gift. Be that positive or negative. Be that affirmative or totally negative. Whatever may be. So, to develop the spirit of acceptance, gracefully, sadhana is required. 
sadhana is required. Not to change the destiny. Not to change that which is preordained. It is only to develop acceptance. If I don't develop the spirit of acceptance, what happens? When positive happens, I will be totally proud and egoistic. If anything negative happens, deep frustration, depression, even suicide. So to avoid both extremes, I should develop the spirit of acceptance as everything is divine. Be that or this, whatever it is. Sadhana is a preparation for acceptance of that which is preordained. Thank you. Why did Baba allow Muddanahadi fraud? Why Baba let the birth of the subtle body's deception happen? Why did he do that? Baba did not do that. Baba did not do that. He did not. Oh, we people have done it. He has not done anything. Why? Point one. God is only a witness. He doesn't allow you to do that. He doesn't allow you to do that. He is witnessing. Sakshi is eternal witness. And number two, this kind of negative situation is developed to test you, to test your devotion, to test your faith, so that you will come out successfully. You will emerge gracefully, firmly established in your faith and devotion. So he has not created fraud. Fraud and that which is pure, upwards and the reverse are the same coin. To prove the purity, fraud may be there. To prove the brilliance of light, day is given to us. And light is absent, it, uh, uh, light is absent in the night. So by its absence we feel the light. We feel the importance of the light in the night. Similarly, this faith is put to test by these fires, by these uh, misconceived notions, by these people who make business out of his teachings. A test to me. Yes, it's always, rather to put it biblically, as per the Bible, that says Satan. Satan will put you all to test. Why Satan? Yes, if Satan is not there, how are you to test you? Baba said, test is my taste. Yes. Why? To pass you in the examination. Tests are conducted not to fail you, to pass you. So, these kind of things, developments, the fraud or whatever you may call, they are all challenges or tests to the genuine devotees to emerge successfully, to prove to the rest of the world that firmly established in their faith and devotion. Thank you. Next question. <laughs> it's too personal. Have you ever thought of going to talk to those people? Look at him straight in, in his eyes and tell him what you think of him? Why should I go there? Why should I look at straight into his eyes? and tell what I think of him. How am I bothered? How am I concerned? Therefore, instead you put it like this, why not you visit Puttaparthi? Put this question, O oh, Mr. Masudan, O oh, Mr. Narasimhati, why not you visit Prasantaniyam and get things cleared? Why not? Instead of asking me, why don't you go there, you better ask them, why don't you come here? Think this way. When they come here, things will be clarified. Because the original place is this. We did not go there because we know that it is not original. You need to come here to prove to the world that you are genuine. You are not coming because you are not genuine. We need not come there. We know that it is not genuine. You understand that? That's what I mean. Thank you. How is it possible like Narasimhurti, Tigre, Srinivas 
who are close to Swami for many years have fallen in the trap of Mudanayali. We don't need to blame them. They may have their own reasons. They may have their own reasons for leaving Swami. And they have may, maybe their own problems. Maybe their own issues. How can we speak on their behalf? Each one may be having a genuine reason for leaving him, which need not be necessarily connected to the person or the place. It is something absolutely personal matter. Why they left, they know well. They are very sure of it. Therefore, better we put this question to them, not to us. Why are you here? I can tell you. Why have you not go there? I can tell you. Why they have not come here? I cannot tell you. They have to tell you. Therefore, and we don't need to blame them also. They may have their own reasons. But I say, all the fate, that's all. All the fate. All that they earned for a period of, period of time, for years, decades of stay with Swami, has been reduced to this state, pitiable situation. As their well-wisher, as their close friend, I pity them. I sympathize. I don't blame them.